not won a game since round three. They'll be desperate to uh, have a big win today. And if you have a look at their side, uh, they've probably, as Neil Baum said during the week, got their most competitive side in. And one of the inclusions is Sean Smith, who we just saw lining up for goal. He kicked six goals against Collingwood in round two earlier this season, so he will be one player that uh, will have to be watched by the Pies. They've also bring in Glenn Lovett for his 100th game. Paul Hopgood plays hits his 50th game, so uh, congratulations to both of those players on their milestones. And also Sean Charles coming in for his first game for a... Uh, Hell of a long time. He only played two games last season. He broke his wrist on three separate occasions last season, so uh, he is certainly in need of a dose of good luck. Todd Viney couldn't take his place in the side. A notable absentee and another one there sitting in the crowd. Monkhurst, he certainly will be missed. And an interesting addition, Lee Walker coming in because he hasn't played too much football either of late, Jerry. No, he injured himself in round three against uh, the Sydney Swans. And Damien Monkhurst, uh, a very big blow because I thought that was where Collingwood could win this one with their dominance in the middle of the ground. Now it's going to be uh, left solely to their on-ball players on the ground. And uh, I think that would swing the, fav the, the match favouritism towards Melbourne. Could be a very interesting encounter. Collingwood, of course, lacking in height on the back line as well. And uh, maybe Gary Lyon and Sean Smith can take advantage of that. The match just about to get underway. Malcolm Blight joins us in the commentary box this afternoon. We'll be introducing him and the Dipper after the break. Donald joined him. Paul Hopgood. And, and uh, wild as well. Paul Hopgood matching up with Tony Francis, one of the uh, informed players for the Pies. Collingwood and Melbourne, traditional rivals from the MCG. The D's to the left, Collingwood to the right. Steins and Richardson. Kelly, a knock on. Lovett goes down, Francis goes through, or in fact tried to go through. Obst gives out the hand pass, and the D's are going to swing into attack early. Tingo's kick up towards left half forward. Nick's almost a mark. Lovett, the two Lovett's combined. Glenn and Brett. Brett almost caught. Back to Tingo. A hurried hand pass. Tries a ball. Was he tripped? Umpire says a Melbourne free kick. Might be 50 as well, it is. Gee, was there much in that Well, you've got to be careful at the start of the game because not only are the players a little bit nervous, but the umpire's also a little bit jumpy. That one, uh, well, it certainly was there. It's always been the argument about the 50. Sometimes uh, they don't deserve 50, maybe only 15, but this one should go down as a goal to Stephen Tingo. 15 is the distance he'll be kicking from when he comes into the mark. Tingo kicks, and what's he done? It's close, it's one behind. So not a good start in that regard. A goal certainly should have been kicked. Let's see if it was worth 50. Well, that's why it was 50, because it was a trip. If you trip by hand, and maybe that was why it was 50, but... Uh... 50 nevertheless, but only a point score. Williams kicks out, and the ball luckily falls to Tony Francis. Williams hit as he kicked it. Francis wants to come out wide. There's a fair bit going off the ball at the back. Shawble now looks towards centre-half forward. Doesn't hit the kick right. It's a poor kick, in fact. And Phoebe, terrific at Love it. Comes out wide to Tingay. Couple of positions early for him. Now has line free, and a beautiful kick. Tingo to Lyons, good play. Lyon wants to get on with it. Sean Smith back in the goal square. But Gary Lyon. Gee, they hurt you, don't they, turnovers? Shawble have made a uh, good position running down the ground. But the quick turnover saw him 30 metres away from his direct opponent, Gary Lyon. And uh, he's going to probably kick Melbourne's first. Gary Lyon is a marvellous kick, and that's no exception. First goal to the Demons. on almost Francis having a few words to say there's Tony Francis he's uh, he's a fantastic player when he's on song and uh, he doesn't mind mixing it with anybody <laughs> particularly if they're over six foot he just sees it as a bigger challenge Alistair Clarkson having the last word with an echo down there as well as we see the pass again So the first two scoring shots to Melbourne. The D's by seven points at the MCG. Steins taps out. Once again, they go forward. It's going to be Tingo to Phoebe. Matthew Phoebe's brother, of course, still on the sidelines. Farmer gets poleaxed and will get a free kick. And Collingwood has started with Lee Walker at centre-half back. Craig Kelly at, uh, on the half-forward line. 
Mark Richardson at centre half forward. David needs centre half forward for Melbourne. So Jeff Farmer, probably too far out to score. He's gone long just the same. Steins at the back. Lyon, a chance off the ground. I think that was a goal. No. I thought Lyon got a clear boot at that. The umpire disagrees, and Gary Lyon not arguing. Might have been off his boot just the same. One goal to Melbourne, and Collingwood yet to score. So the D's getting off to a pretty good start. Let's watch it again. That was touched, was it? Yes, a rush behind. So Gary Lyon, no score for him. Tingay again. Not a clean position that time. Tried to get it to Obst. Hand pass to Orman now. No, it wasn't effective. Right. Williams, knock on by Walker, back into the side today to Francis. Francis to towards centre half forward, using his body beautifully as Nettlebeck on Richardson, and really did put him out of business. So Craig Nettlebeck, Swans, across to Perth. There's a free kick off the footy, there's a whistle, and this will be reversed. Didn't see what happened, but umpire's pretty clear. And going to Richardson. Shane Watson now a full forward for Collingwood. Kicks, signs, cuts it out beautifully. Well done by the big fella. Gives it off to Clarkson. He hits the ground running. Now comes back into the centre of the ground. It's a long kick, ill directed, underneath it, Crow. And that will be a free kick as Farmer comes in over the top very aggressively. Nathan Buckley, being, Nathan Buckley being picked up by Andrew Ops. So it's going to be a hard day at the office for Nathan Buckley. Crow's kick inside 50. Francis. Now a chance for Collingwood's first goal. Patterson makes no mistake from 35 out, and he puts it through. So the first effective Collingwood thrust gets full benefit. 1-2 to one goal. Yeah, pretty smart handball, this one, from Tony Francis, who's uh, starting the game pretty well. There you see him bursting away, leaving Hopkirk in his wake. Patterson had to kick that one because he did draw the player and didn't elect a handball over the top but it's pretty tough to argue against a goal so two point march into the D's early going in this first quarter holiday weekend here in Melbourne Francis wise the tackle and the ball falls free so another bounce will result that's the youngster Trent Orman Allen from Port Adelaide number 35 there for the D's Bounce back almost in the centre of the ground. Favours Collingwood. Wright pushes it down with one hand, then follows up with the tackle. Ops with a quick kick with his left foot out wide. The race is on now. Goes to centre half forward. Neats beautifully done with his body. Fantastic play from Neats. Unfortunately, he lets himself down with the kick. Sean Smith there trying to grab it with one hand to keep it in. But uh, David Neats and Gary Lyon and those key central spots, Jared, just look, do, do look dangerous. Yeah, I think Melbourne have uh, started quite well. As we see uh, that the weather, we're expecting a bit of a shower today. Maximum of 14. We're not far away from that right now. It's fairly dull conditions. A little bit of drizzle around this morning. Shawble taps it wider. Francis kicks it wider still. Clarkson, if he can gather just inside the line, he can't. As he's pursued over there by Scott Crow, former Hawk. Throw in 35 metres from the behind post. Alistair Clarkson, 93 games for North Melbourne. Likes mixing it up. And we've seen him doing that today already. Knocked down by Walker. High tackle might have been against him. Certainly the Melbourne crowd was looking for a free kick. Ooh. Gary Lyon in the thick of things and last to get up. Probably still playing under handicap of injury, but I guess he'd be about 90% fit. He's worth every penny out there. Hopwood gives it to him. Oh, he got uh, hit a little bit high as he kicked. That might be downfield. It's certainly going to be a free kick. The argument is where it's going to be taken. Against Francis. No arguments, Malcolm? Jared? No, I would have thought that was in the act of kicking, though. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Mel. I think that probably with a free kick was there, but he was still airborne when he hit him, so it was uh, only a split second after he kicked it, if at all. So a tough one for the Pies, but once the decision's been made, you've got to get on with it. I think Gary Lyon would be pretty pleased to be playing at 90% uh, fit. Peter, I think he might be a little bit less than that. Sean Smith kicks 
and kicks truly the D second. So some feeling out there as Melbourne goes to an eight-point lead. And there's Sean Smith. Bandage and guard on his left forearm. And there's Tony Francis who uh, gave away that free kick. He's an aggressive character. He's uh, sometimes frustrated by the taggers, as you can see there, with uh, Hopgood playing his 50th game, giving away a free kick. And Tony Shaw will be absolutely furious yes. with that easy getaway. Yeah, fair bit going on off the ball. Now Steins kicks back into what centre half forward needs. Gee, doesn't he look dangerous? Isn't that a great sign for Melbourne? Tony David Neitz hasn't really hit his straps as a marking half forward for uh, most of this season. And this is a terrific mark. Yes, uh, they do look dangerous. Uh, gee, a lot of people around town have gone for Melbourne, Jared. I mean, I, I still thought that Collingwood might have enough, but to the way they've started, France is probably coming off the ground. And a fair bit more still going off the footy as David Neitz lines up for the third goal for Melbourne. Kicks from outside 50, doesn't quite hit it right, falls four short, and Shawville in front takes a very well judged mark. Comes across wide to Crow. Crow has a bit of time, now delivers it beautifully to Richardson. Alan Richardson now looks back inside, so they've done it with short passing to right. Sets up Buckley, has to kick under pressure, goes to centre half forward, Richardson in the box seat, and a terrific diving mark has been paid. Collingwood crowd don't like it, but he did hang on to it for a long while. Now, Richardson. Brown up forward, Watson, the targets. They're not tall players by any means. And you, when you look at that Collingwood forward line, you think, gee, where's the big mark going to come from? So that's what right goes to Richardson. Now he has to chip it. Oh, fantastic coverage from Gavin Brown. He's hurt himself too. I think he has caught one. Just did not deviate off that footy, Gavin Brown. Fantastic leadership. But I think he's got a corky here. You can see the knee of Jim Steins going straight into the uh, left thigh of Gavin Brown. He'll be lucky to continue playing, I would think. Gee, that'll be a blow losing Bunkhurst before the game. And if Rowdy can't continue, that's uh, a rather severe dent in their chances, you'd reckon. Just brilliant, though, wasn't it? Great. Oh, no, it's gutsy round. Yeah. So, Gavin Brown... Uh, Certainly a veteran now. He's only kicked six goals for the year, so he hasn't been as in prolific goal kicking form. 171 games. And he is a sore boy. He's only got one option now, and that's to keep on going. It has its downside, it makes it bleed more, but if you go off and put ice on it, it'll stiffen up. It's usually a pretty good kick for goal. And as usual, he's missed, and unfortunately, he's in a lot of trouble now. He is very sore. It's a point to the pies. The march is now seven points. Alex McDonald consequently warming up. Just watch for Jim Steins' knee. Bang. And that would have hurt. Glenn Lovitz. If you're a Melbourne supporter, great to see him back on the side today. Lovitz kicked a centre wing on the outer side. Kelly in front. Nettlebeck behind. No mark taken. That'll be a Collingwood free kick. Deliberate, I think. Collingwood player is hurt. Is it Kelly? Yes, it is. Yes, Nettlebeck kicked the ball off the ground and actually kicked Kelly, so uh, he'd be sore too. So Wright takes the free kick. Tingo almost. Now Watson. A tricky one. And rushed through off the hands of Marcus Seacamp for a rush behind to the Collingwood side. And Kelly back into the hands of the trainers after that accidental kick. Mark taken to the back pocket meantime by Alistair Clark. So that's six points the difference here at the MCG. Plenty of options for him. And Gavin Brown appears to be limping to the boundary line. Hopgood to Seacamp to Tinge. Well, at least that was the intent. Shawball falls over. The opportunity now is for Crow, but it's coming back. It's going to be a Collingwood free kick to Nathan Buckley as Rowdy goes off the ground with that cork thigh. Buckley takes the free kick and kicks up towards centre half forward. Great mark taken by Mark Richardson. This is tremendous mark floating over the top of his opponent. Alex McDonald snuck onto the ground to replace Gavin Brown. But uh, once again, another good sign for Collingwood. And their centre half forward starts to take marks like this. It's all positive. 
Yes, Mark Richardson, he really has to stand up today in that central forward position. They really are short and under man. 23 years of age now, really does need to take the step. Kicks, it's a high kick. It's floating back, but it just won't float back enough. So just a disappointing finish after a very good mark. And the margin now, five points. Craig Kelly, minding his zone area, holding that arm a bit limp. Out to Clarkson again. Now comes back inside, the kick's good to Phoebe. So he's love it. Breaks away, comes back into the centre, and Jim Steins is there to accept it gleefully. Back to Phoebe, running all right, the Demons. Lovely kick, great kick. Richardson goes back with courage, fantastic stuff. Buckley with a great handball to Krasiska. He's got a player out wide, that's Graham White. He covers beautifully after he's spilling the ball. Comes back inside, turns it on Trippens, and now comes to centre-half forward. Richardson needed again. Big pack of players, it's Watson, can't grab hold of it. Players mill around the footy at centre-half forward for Collingwood. Almost falls loose, does now. Quick kick out the pack. Overrun by Melbourne. Through comes Cow with Dash. Kicks out wide and chips to Tingo. Tingo's been pretty busy in the first quarter. Still he goes. One bounce. Might have another one. Decides to kick up towards centre wing. Neats. Had to bend down. Phoebe. Lovely Bork. Salt Clarkson into trouble. Back to Tingo. Or at least that was the intent. Richardson, clever hand pass, Russell, Buckley unloads with a bomb, kicks towards centre-half forward, wild in front, couldn't complete the mark, and it's all tied up, free kick on the shoulder, Melbourne. Did Darren Cowell will it, or the player that's underneath there, is it Lovett? I think it is, yes, Glenn Lovett. Well, Brett Lovett, brother. Let's go down to Dipper. Yeah, Craig Kelly's come off the ground, uh, Peter. It looks like a wrist injury. And also, Gavin Brown is on the ground with his uh, thighs heavily strapped. Thanks, Dipper. Brett Lovett's kicked towards centre wing. Oh, the two redheads are wild and uh, neat to provide. Steins. Phoebe. Well, that's good vision. Excellent vision for Farmer. Tooth are out to score, centering kick, looking for line, gets rid of his opponent, still he goes, free kick. Shawball, the recipient. Well, I think the umpire could uh, tough on Gary Lyon on that occasion, it was just good use of the body. Crow, that left half back, metres clear. Now the Magpies can do something with Williams, who's usually a good long kick on the run, no exception there. Big pack of players in the marking contest, it comes to Steins, and the Ds are going to get clear again. It's Lovett from Nettlebeck. Almost thought Neitz uh, had that at the back. Tingay. Obst. Back to Neitz. Caught well by Buckley. Ball out the front to Clarkson, who's made his presence felt already. 15 metres out goes at goal and has missed an absolute sitter. Should he have gone to Gary Lyon? Well, if he had have taken the bounce in the Collingwood uh, full back, Shawville would have uh, pounced on him. So I think from 15 to 20 metres out, you've got to take responsibility for the goal maybe he was in two minds thinking about Gary Lyon however both sides now paying the price for missed opportunities yes yeah, this game very dissimilar to the one played earlier Collingwood got out the blocks beautifully and led by three or four goals at quarter time we've got a real contest on today as the kick from Buckley goes to Crow a rather unusual scene Malcolm about one tenth of the ground is in sunshine <laughs> As he nearly gets there and runs into it now. Now we're back into darkness, so that's fine. I'm used to that. <laughs> and here we go, out to Paul Williams. And what a gifted player, Paul Williams. Now has to go to Richardson. That's the right option, to centre-half forward. There's a contest. Richardson over the back, Hassel on the ground. Caught and will be... Hold. Well, well, give it a free kick, really, for holding the man. And John Hassel... Hit the pack with pace because it went to centre half forward. Kicks low. Great mark to Hotton. Hotton stood his ground. And with a great kick uh, over Turley. So Trent Hotton. Young lad from Preston. Just, just a dozen games or so for Collingwood. He's going to kick from a bit of a sandy patch underneath his feet there at centre half forward. Kicks from 45, gets underneath it. Oh, but the crowd are happy. Scores a level in the first quarter.
Well, it was good work there by Trent Hotton, who is playing in the ruck against Jim Steins, and I think it's fair to say Steins has had the better of him in this opening uh, part of the first term. But he probably just about squares the ledger with that uh, good forward work. It's a great piece of play by John Russell, who, as Malcolm said, hit the pack at 100 miles an hour through the free kick. Hotton's goal. Williams, the attempted break away from the centre, goes to Phoebe. Good tackle by Stephen Patterson. Again, a Melbourne ball. Kicked up by Turley. Opportunity for Farmer. Neitz gets there first. Well tackled. Ball jarred free. Wasn't too high. Umpire says play on. Perhaps a good decision. Farmer. Lyon. Has he got it this time inside the line? He has. Shawble disagrees. Gary Lyon goes back. Good positioning by Hopgood into the space and takes the mark but it may be coming back probably squares up for that first one Pete, with Francis and Ryan he's gone again take two <laughs> not good determined to get a shot at goal 50th game a little patch of sunshine has long since gone quite gloomy here He's about 35 metres out. Not much reaction from the crowd, at least of a positive nature, so one behind. Kicked by Paul Hopgood. Melbourne certainly with the opportunities in the first quarter, but just leading by the barest of margins. Six and a half minutes left in the term. Kick in, straight to Tingo. He's had an abundance of kicks in the first quarter, five and three so far, plus three marks. Sean Smith making a lead, he's ignored that. Gets onto this one a little bit better. That looks pretty good. That is a goal. Great kick. So the sixth kick of Stephen Tingo registers four points. It's 3-4 to 2-3, and Rowan Saw's having a few words to it. Well, it's interesting, the body language of the Melbourne players, uh, once they've done something pretty spectacular, they're all running up and patting each other on the back. But not only that, they're going and giving uh, the closest Collingwood player a bit of physical stuff as well. So they're just displaying a shade of arrogance at the present time, Melbourne. Maybe it's just a facade, but if they continue to keep kicking goals, that confidence will grow. Steins and Hotton. You'd think Steins, and it did. Falls to Hotton, though. Great smother. Hobbs. Off to Hopgood. Here's the kick to Lyon. Shaw will all get there almost. But Lyon was just too good in front. Jumped a bit early, and the youngster Shawball really is a tough task, isn't it, for a kid that's played 13 odd games to be playing full back on one of the game's superstars. Tough task indeed when the ball comes down like that from Hopkins. That was a mate, that was a great kick, but uh, the passage of play was all Andrew Ops. Smother and then delivery. So Gary Lyon comes in for his second goal. He's just drifting across to the left. I'm not certain about this. No, this is the goal up wide, gives it a behind. So, just a great build-up out of the centre then from the Demons, and now lead by eight points. 3-5 to 2-3 in the first quarter, of which five minutes and 19 seconds is remaining. Kick in this time, a little bit better. Mark taken by Gavin Krasiska in the right back pocket. One of the veterans of the Collingwood side. Krasiska. Transfers played to half-back Neitz, almost. Richardson from Hotton, back to Buckley, back to Francis. Francis looking for options. Goes out wide, now it's Crow, who takes it from Burns. The former Hawk, long-hand pass, gets it back to Burns again. And the Magpies moving it from one end of the ground to the other, with the mark taken by Shane Watson. diving grab on the chest and still we have mouthing off behind play Nettlebeck and Richardson getting into the act and Clarkson's been a contributor since the siren kick by Watson he is also marginally off target and registers only one behind to Shane Watson his first score of the day it's 2-4 to 3-5 and Rowdy 
probably not in the best of moods there on the boundary line after that corky phoebe nearly the mark good bump by francis collingwood desperate that's too high on phoebe chance for patterson but the ball's all tied up and the free kick certainly missed there for melbourne it's going to be 15 meters out from the collingwood goal the location for a bounce just under four minutes remaining seven points is the margin just an observation on full backs. It seems that the less experienced they are, the shorter their vision they go for that 30 metre kick. Whereas the more experienced ones tend to uh, find the 40 and 50 metre spare man. Great pressure there from the Collingwood forwards just to keep the ball in, to give themselves another chance with a boundary throw in. So Craig Turley there on screen. And Lampel on the ground there for Melbourne. Richardson and Steins falls to Hopgood, belts it forward. Great covering there for Cisco. Really tried to help his teammate. Hotman it was. The ball comes back to Crow. Crow kicks the ball forward in front to Collingwood and marked. Ball play on by the umpire. Hopgood from here and Watson. He's not all that happy about that. And from where we sat, Jared, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. We well, had some support from about uh, 20,000 Collingwood supporters. <laughs> As would always be the case when there's a dubious decision with any uh, football team. Yeah, I think that's a blue, though. I mean, that's that's a mark for mate, all intents and purpose. Collingwood were trying to work hard in underneath. Gee, there's a stack of players around this footy. And Orman Allen, the youngster, ends up with the ball. And Patterson says that's holding the ball. So everyone wants to umpire the game. Well, that's what happens when the decision's wrong. People get a bit agitated. And clearly a wrong decision by Hayden Kennedy. And Collingwood players... Frustrated. Great tap from Hines. Steins. And the ball's called to play on to Buckley. And Buckley races him and kicks the goal. The advantage rule paid. Holding the ball was the decision. And again, it's a point the difference. And once again, the uh, niggles go on after the, after the play. It's pretty standard when there's so much uh, at stake. Nathan Buckley just showing what a good goal kicker he is. And he's a, he does get a lot of possessions in the back half, but uh, when he gets the ball in the forward half, he's every chance at a goal with a result. Back to one point, the difference. The little niggles continue off the ball. Francis and Hopgood. Bounce goes Melbourne's way. Ormond Allen almost caught. Farmer likewise. Shovels it out wide. Clarkson, good effort from mid-air. Out of bounds, it will be. Melbourne's right half forward flank as Sean Smith trots back to the pocket. The odds on the match today Melbourne at six to four from Sportsbook and Collingwood starting in the red. So throw in 60 metres out. Neats, not too many Melbourne jerseys there. Lovett might have given away the free kick. Collingwood players still trying to umpire it. Maybe John Hassel had a point. He could have got a free. No, the umpire disagreeing. It's Mark Westgarth. Bounce this time inside 50. Good tackle by Wild. Ball shuffled out where Williams gets a favourable bounce. Kicks beautifully on the run, Williams. Inside 50. Walker. Or was it uh, Crow? That was McDonald. The Melbourne player is hurt. Come back to that in a moment. Off the hands. And Darren Cowell for a rush behind. It's Craig. Uh, no, it's uh, Lamprell, I believe, who copped that one from Alex McDonald coming flying over the back of the pack. Just came on, Lamprell. He's only been on about 10 minutes. So the attrition rate pretty high in the first quarter. Let's watch it again. He's in the middle there. Copped it high and in the back. So, they'll be pretty sore. Brett Lovett. Brett Lovett's kick up towards right half forward. Neats. Tingo, who's been busy. Still those two combined. Kick there to the man on the mark. Now he gets another chance. But the ball might be out of bounds. Taken that way by Andrew Shawble. It is out of bounds. Centre wing. As Andrew Lamprell now has to leave the ground. And he doesn't look at all good. So we've got Brown on the boundary line injured. And coming on is Adam Uze for the D's, the score's level. And also Kelly. 
Yeah, boundary throw in. Love it. Feeds it back to Clarkson. Forced onto his left foot. It has to go high. Centre half forward. Needs with the last fly. And has taken a beautiful mark. And just some treatment there for Andrew Hamples. As uh, mentioned, he's got it high. So David Neach came in from the side and took a well judged mark in the end over Lee Walker. So his first kick uh, early in the game was uh, a bit wobbly and didn't quite make the distance. Kicks from just on 50. This is a better looking kick. Grusiska tries hard, but it's a great kick from Neat. And the D's go further ahead. They're only one goal ahead in Melbourne, but they do look to be playing the better football. And some of their players that have been down a little bit are just growing in stature. And this is uh, the most important one of the lot. David Neat, who was a star at centre half forward last year, has been down on that position. But I think also Alistair Clarkson who delivered that football, having another great game, keeping Scott Russell out of the contest. Clarkson has six and one, and the Dees lead by six points. Love it. Tackled by Russell. Hotton's in there. In the last minute of play in the first quarter, in fact, in the last few seconds. Steins gets himself up to start off over again. Probably no more scoring, though, in the term. Still the niggling continues. Francis and Hopgood. Sean Smith's just gone down to full back. And there's the siren. The umpire didn't get a chance to bounce it after he was confronted by Tony Francis. And the scoreboard at the end of a very eventful first term. A lot happened on the ball and just as much seemed to happen off it. 4-5 to 3-5. Melbourne leading by six points. About the second term at the MCG. Six points the difference in favour of the D's. It was an action-packed first quarter in more ways than one. Injuries and a little bit of spite out there from time to time. Nettlebeck at half-back, right half-back flank, and through some pretty heavy traffic did well. Ormond Avon gives it over to Obst, who in turn brings it back to Craig Turley. Turley's kicked to centre wing. That's a mark to Shawble, at least I would have thought. Neats handballs it out of bounds, and the umpire says throw it in. Well, an arguable mark, that one, but I think uh, Trent Orman Allen, in only his second game of football, having a pretty good uh, day on Paul Williams, one of the potential match winners for Collingwood. And on the replay, probably didn't hold it long enough. Steins in front, gloves it down to Phoebe, who's caught. Attempted kick there by Craig Turley, ineffective. Farmer gets it back to Steins. Bradley medalist kicks up towards the 50-metre line. Neats. Back to Turley, back to Tingay, back to Neats. Wild comes at him. Lion, good mark. And Krasiska has decked Farmer. Nothing for that. Love it. Couldn't take it. Walker read it well. Now the Magpies are going to come away. Burns. Burns kicks up towards midfield. Over the head of Ormond Allen. The mark taken by Richardson, or was it? No, it wasn't the mark. Holding the ball, therefore, is certainly a chance. But it's not going to be paid. Well, it's always dangerous if you cross the ground in front of goal. It's almost a must that it uh, finds its opponent because clubs so adept now at the rebound in football. The bounce right on the corner of the square. Players in underneath it. Wild trying to grab hold of it. Stein's working very hard. And Wild again back in. So another bounce. 55 metres out from the Collingwood goal to Jason Wild from country New South Wales the town he came from is absolutely too long to pronounce coward once again <laughs> a free kick uh, for holding the man and going to Hopgood now switches play wide Steins getting possessions now goes long to centre half forward that looks a terrific kick for Needs it gives him a chance anyhow at least it was in front of him can't manage it and forces it over the line uh, for another boundary throw in. Well, it's pretty tough to get possessions at centre half four, but as we speak, David Neitz is the second highest possession winner on the ground with nine, second only to Stephen Tingo, who's got 11. So the kick comes back to Ops, throws it onto his left foot. One on one contest here. Neitz feeds off beautifully to Phoebe. Phoebe goes short in the line direction, 
The skipper gets it, screws the ball back around to the front of the goal square. Disciplined kick. Mark wanted oh. here, almost to Farmer. Off the ground, Clarkson comes in. Now, again, it's the post. So, Alistair Clarkson had two goes at it. Just couldn't get the second one to roll the right side of the post. So, the Demons stretch their lead to seven points. He's been busy, Alistair Clarkson. Seven. Seven kicks, one hand pass, two marks and two behinds. Nathan Buckley. One of his kicks out from fullback in the first quarter resulted in a Melbourne goal, but to balance that, he kicked one himself. Turley couldn't take it. Tries to get it to Steins. He's working pretty hard. Clarkson again. Kicks across his body down towards half forward. Hopgood was it Tingay. Tingay's got it. Lyon calling forward in the goal square. Kicked long, he says. Tingay has one against his name. Already has a second opponent, Alan Richardson. 11 possessions, that's the reason. Started on Graham Wright. Outside 50. Good long kick. Oh, great mark, Neats. And puts it through. Terrific footy. Five six to three five. Melbourne supporters love that. Yes, David Neitz uh, giving his new opponent Andrew Shawball a bit of a run around early in the second quarter, and it is just fantastic when you see a player of immense ability coming back to his absolute best and just follow Shawball there. He's a good three or four yards behind his opponent. Obviously discounted him as part of the action. A fatal mistake. So Hotton and Steins. Certainly Steins with a height advantage. And it works that way too. Coming off the half back line is Burns is caught. Just mishandled there by Williams. A lot of pressure in there from Melbourne. I mean they do look a souped up side today. And Jared, we spoke earlier, a lot of the pundits around town thought Melbourne could win this. Yes, I think uh, just with the the absence of uh, Damien Monkhurst, I certainly swung over because he just knew that Collingwood were going to struggle anyway and if they didn't have uh, everything going for them in the middle of the ground it was difficult to see where they were going to get all their goals from. So they go at it again. Hot gives it a thump. Doesn't go very far. Orman Allen can't get it. Flips to Williams. He goes direct to centre half forward. Fontes running out at Seacamp. Goes very well. Handball to Hopgood. This is Smith. Has a bit of time though. And a free kick coming for a push to Hopgood. So, call cool play on now. Comes around wing side and a lovely kick to Obbs. Terrific skills shown by Hopgood. Gee, why wouldn't you go to Neitz? He heads in that direction. Shawball with him. Better that time. Contest was good. Back to Crow. Has players inside. Thinks that's too dangerous. Goes to oh. Shawball. Has to wait for it. Love it. Pinches it. And then goes in towards centre half forward. Richardson can't get hold of the footy. Players, a lot of players been around there now. And another bounce from the result. Some 45 metres out from the Melbourne goal. The steal of the day, wasn't it? From Brett Lovett. He went past Shawbel like a tornado. Inside 50. Needs again. Hopgood a snap. Off target, out of bounds. Collingwood free kick in the left back pocket. The recipient will be Crow. Farmer stands the mark. He's going to go across the goal. Hotton. In the opposite back pocket. Has found Richardson on his own, short of half back. Francisca says go, and he does. Russell missed it, Ops didn't. Clarkson. He's everywhere, Clarkson. Needs again. Oh, another great mark. Five marks he's taken, and some of them have been absolute pearlers. Well, there's been plenty of people around town telling Neil Baum to shift this bloke from centre half back, from centre half forward to centre half back. Not anymore. And he really uh, is displaying all the reasons why Neil Baum has wanted him to uh, to maintain him as a centre half forward. He's kicked two already. Steins and Buckley. He kicks, and he kicks his third. Terrific display by him. And Melbourne go to 6 6 42, Collingwood 3 5 23. Yes, and we had uh, Scott Russell up on screen there. It was his drop mark in the middle of the ground that has cost him. Russell just probably having his quietest day for the season. 
As Sean Charles comes on for his first run of the season. So, so back in the centre, Melbourne now forcing the issue. Comes to Turley. Turley goes to centre half forward. Walker goes back with the fly to the ball. Krasiska there. Swings it round. Under pressure on his right foot. And the ball heads towards the boundary line. And I'd suggest Collingwood are pretty happy with that ball being there right now. And you know, I'm just wondering, I mean, Krasiska's an experienced player. I mean, you've surely got to put him onto Neats now. Yes, really. He really is threatening to uh, just cut this game right apart, David Neats. And pretty crucial moment in the game for uh, Collingwood because another couple of goals that might be gone by half time. Yes, 19 point margin. Krasiska with the free kick going the ruck work there. And he has gone onto Neats. And pushed out. No, it's not. Nettlebeck will take the free, or mark, I should say. Now comes out wide to Lovett. Lovett has to hold it up. Wants to come back inside to Phoebe. Running well. Big long kick. Line in the off from the spot. Sure would it well actually to come back and force the ball to the ground. And Charles on the ground. Line comes back for a second attempt. Pretty good effort there in the forward line. And almost some magic from Gary Line, but not quite. So a boundary throw in. Forward pocket. 30 metres around from the Melbourne goal. So Neats and Krasiska doing the ruck work to Russell. Uh, Francis it was, gets it forward. Wild taps it back to Hotton. Hotton puts it into the path of Hassel. Can run. Pressure came from Tingo. Orman Anil now caught. Gets the handball away. Wild. Terrific handball out to Walker. He's under pressure. Somehow or other tries to get through the traffic. Caught. So the pressure from Melbourne's terrific. Love it. Norman Allen caught. And forced forward. Hopgood. Pushing, shoving. Gets his boot to ball. Love it caught. Exciting. Oh, minute and a half. Now falls to Charles to Turley. And this could break some spirit. Love it inside. Back to Farmer. And Farmer from 20 metres out kicks and has missed. Well, deserved a goal. Jeez. How many did uh, the umpires not go there in midfield? Well, it doesn't have to be pretty to be entertaining. We saw a rugby scrum for a good uh, minute and a half in the middle of the ground there, and it was just terrific football. And uh, not surprisingly, Melbourne won that one as well. Buckley kicks in. Hassel. Now Hotton. Hotton's kicked straight down the centre of the ground. He'll be looking for a mark up there from Richardson. Fell a little bit short of him. Still he goes. He'll try to get it to the wild. Which he does. Wilds kick one on one duel at the back. Sean Smith with the arm guard. He needs to be quick, and he is. Nettleback, another good mark. Took a good one under pressure about a couple of minutes back, and that one was just as good. At 45 games for Sydney, Craig Nettleback. Short of right centre wing. Melbourne fans certainly finding voice at the moment. Charles, who got a terrific cheer. When he came on at the back of the pack there, hasn't got a touch yet. But Bracky risked three times, I think it was, last year. So his luck needs to change for the better. Steins working hard. Too tall for Hotton. Couldn't get a clear tap away, though. Farmer dragged to the ground by Johnny Hassel. A stalemate, according to the umpire, and it's going to be another ball up. Melbourne currently playing with a loose man in defence. Craig Turley just uh, sitting down around the foot of defensive 50. Almost at the halfway mark of the quarter. Rowan Soares wants some room to bounce it. There's not much there. Hot and a little nudge. Gets it away from Steins. Tried to go off the ground. Charles gets his first kick. Not a memorable one. Might be a free kick to Neitz. It is. Neitz has kicked three goals so far. Seven kicks, five handballs and five marks. And they're pretty impressive stats, whichever way you look at them. He has been spectacular. I suppose when we said Melbourne's best side, we forgot to mention Schwartz on the sideline with the knee reconstruction again. Speaking of bad luck. So not an easy shot, about a 45 degree angle, 50 metres out. Need to be a good kick. It may be a mark to Lyon just inside. He plays on, oh. kicks and misses, or is it still in play? 
Went straight up in the air. A rush of blood from Gary Lyon. It gives Persister the chance. He's bowled over as he kicks the ball. Comes up towards centre wing. Chance for Walker, but it's out of bounds. Yeah, Gary Lyon's still got the hands on the hips. He just cannot believe the result there. Neither can I. It's almost a shank, isn't it? <laughs> one, of my, one of my golf shots, this. He did the right thing, really. I mean, oh, he yes, killed everybody. Just didn't quite hit it right. Williams just having trouble around that uh, midfield, aren't they? Russell, Francis, Williams just not getting enough of the footy. Handball misses. Another one smothered. Buckley has to stand. Stands up in the tackle and then absolutely dumped. So Melbourne are playing for keeps. This is 16th side in the competition. And this sort of enthusiasm and aggressiveness around the footy. I'm sure if they've done this for a, a lot more of the year, they wouldn't be uh, in 16th spot. It doesn't help when you get a marker at centre half forward. Does well. Hot pushes it back to Burns. Orchard on the ground. Donald goes off the ground. Pushing and shoving. Nettlebeck good mark. Very good value, Craig Nettlebeck for Melbourne. Coming over from the Dockers where he didn't play a senior game. Ball's given off to Seacamp. Walker. Oh, that'll give him some confidence. He's just been a bit slow to the action sometimes, but uh, that can certainly lift the player. He goes back to centre half forward. Watson in front. Smith goes to spoil. Nettlebeck strides out towards the right boundary line. Now comes back. Wants some help from behind. Does it himself in the end. Orman Allen. Good jump. Plays on. Phoebe. Just keeps dropping down Phoebe. This is his 11th possession too. And 80 odd game. So kick in the centre half forward area. Kosiska over the top. And Ferdinka met that punch on Obst. So as we perhaps suggested. Um, him to play on Deneats. Just that experience, uh, the height advantage, but uh, the kids were just having trouble with him. Steins and Hotton love it. Mark taken by Scott Burns. Burns goes across the ground looking for Francis, who gets dumped by Brett Lovett. Collingwood crowd asks for 50, and they will get 50. Francis started the match in a long sleeve jumper and Rowan Soros measures out the mark for him now as we watch it again. Well, Collingwood are yet to kick a goal in this quarter. Francis looking a little proppy too. Dipper says he may have uh, savaged a hamstring perhaps. That would be disaster for the Magpies with Gavin Brown also on the sidelines with a thigh injury. Mark was taken by Walker. Starting to get into the action in the middle stages of the second quarter. Tony Francis coming off the ground. Placed by Stephen Patterson, so uh, obviously an injury problem. Walker goes short. Oh. oh, gee, that's too short. Buckley, well, he could just about kick this if he gets onto it. Big climb in the goal square, off the hands of the pack. Nittlebeck will take the free kick anyway. Having a good quarter, Nettlebeck. And I think that just typified uh, Collingwood's problem at the present time. They're trying to force and invent goals rather than just kicking to a game plan, a game plan that they've established over their weeks. Seacamp gives it back to him. Nettlebeck's kicked to centre wing. Two on one, Collingwood's way. Leeds outgunned that time. Krasiska, but no mark. Yeah. I wonder why. Buckley, Hotton. Chance for the Magpies. Chopped off beautifully by Lovett, who reads the play so brilliantly. Steins. Steins from right centre wing. It's a foot race. Neats, man of the moment. And certainly man of the match so far. Lyon behind. Farmer into the goal square. He won't pass it to Lyon this time. He kicks and he goes. Well, could be plenty happening down there. I'll get a freebie here, the Demons. They might get another goal. Well, it was due to boil over, wasn't it, after that first quarter? And Tony Shaw, once again, his side struggling with injury, but being compounded by a lack of discipline. So a sensation here, another free kick to Melbourne after the goal was kicked, and Farmer may get two without the ball going back to the centre. He has! And Tony Shaw will beat it.
55 to 23, and that has broken the game wide open, gentlemen. Well, it was threatening to do so uh, from the, the five-minute mark of the second quarter where David Leach just showed that he was going to continue on his dominant form from the first quarter. He introduced Sean Charles. He's given them a little bit more bite. And once again, it's Neitz who used the reverse screw mongrel punt to go over the top of Gary Lyon's head, picked up by Farmer. Oregon, that's one of the toughest decisions I've seen in footy, to be honest. Well, if it was for what was done to Farmer, it was pretty uh, harsh, wasn't it, that we saw? He did do it a split second after, but I've seen that 4,158,000 times in this game and never seen another free kick given. Mm. I think that's over umpiring to be quite honest. And now we're back in the centre and the game is just about now dead. Rowan Soares puts it down. Hot and gets it over the top. Ops does well to soccer it forward. Met by Crow. Comes back in towards centre half forward. Cow sits and waits. And distribution of the ball, not good. Nettlebeck having a picnic. Out to Obst, there's a player inside. He doesn't quite go there. Donald comes at it, but drops his head away from the footy, so that doesn't help at all. Buckley, back to Williams. Shocking kick. Well, perhaps was it. It's ended up with Wild. Wild can kick and make something for it for the Maggies. Can't find, finish that off at all. And a oh. great mark. Super mark from Walker. Running with the flight of the ball, went hard at it. And so three marks in the last five or six minutes for Lee Walker. Perhaps he is the target that Collingwood need. Yes, they're going to need somebody to stand up on the forward line because they really haven't got a forward structure that they can rely on. But Lee Walker is a natural forward. I'm sure they played him in defence because of his first game back from injury. But the situation desperate now for the Pies. Walker tries to check side. He's gone up by has a look, but it actually nicks the post. So only a point results. And a disappointing finish to what was a sensational mark. It was a good mark, wasn't it? Deserved better. The difference, 31 points in Melbourne's favour as the D's make a change. And interestingly, Farmer coming off, the player who kicked those two goals without the ball being bounced in the centre. It was Melbourne's running game that's cutting Collingwood to pieces. Phoebe this time kicks towards right half forward. Nix will get a free kick against Krasiska. By Hayden Kennedy directing him around. He's kicked three goals so far. As we see it again. Nine kicks, five marks and five hand passes for the man on screen. Two career goals from his 76 matches. Kicking right on 50. Needs to come back. It won't. Oh. The mark is there. That's Adam Uzay, I think, at the bottom. Good grab. And the youngster, in terms of experience, Tony Shaw will be pulling his hair out, although it's probably too short to do that. The distance won't be a problem, obviously, from there. Goes at the goal straight. Plenty of crowd reaction, but in the negative. If you're a Melbourne supporter, he's unhappy with that and one behind his first score of the day. So well, four minutes left in the quarter, and it's 32 points Melbourne's way. Well, if Collingwood are to get back into this game, they do need a huge lift in centre, as uh, Blighty mentioned earlier in the quarter. The likes of Williams and Scott Russell, Francis and Buckley really have to just have big second halves. Great kick from Buckley to Williams to set this going. Krasiska with courage. He's one of those players, isn't he? Needs some leadership now, Collingwood. They haven't kicked a goal this quarter, and Melbourne have got three, I reckon, but the scoreboard says four due to some umpiring help. Poor decision then from Kosiska to try and set it up. Goes back into the middle to Burns. Wants support, got it. Richardson, another senior player, and chipped away. So two chip aways from senior players will not help the confidence of the youngster. Nettlebeck to Turley. Oh, they can share it. Tingo runs himself into trouble. So there's some pressure from Collingwood. Now this could be a big turnover. 
Russell gets a very one of his very few kicks and has to stand his ground in front was Kosiska again. Now the ball's kicked forward and players wanted to run at it. Clarkson does, punches it away, falls for Buckley, he's just in trouble and goes back a long, long way to Kosiska. Kicks it out wide. One-on-one -on -one contest. Lovett does well on Williams. The ball falls to the wing. Lovett, cool, gives it up. Ops knew he had a player in assistance in Phoebe, but just can't quite find that player. And the ball forced out of bounds, centre wing. Under three minutes to half time, Collingwood, as we just mentioned, goal was this quarter, and they'd love a couple before the main change. Steins gets it back over his head, chance for Charles. Ormond Allen beats him to it. Saw him play against Essendon, and he did very well. Bounces it right on 50, and that might be a Collingwood free to McDonald. No. So the D's by 32 points. They lost in the Earlier round, round two, by just under 100 points, his dipper. Can't quite hear him, we'll get back to him shortly. Steins and Hotton, Wild and Obst, Glenn Lovett, tries to paddle it back to Charles, not successful, and we will see a bounce. Now we've found Dipper. Uh, sorry, Pete, yeah, Farmer's been taken off the ground. Looks like he's got some knee soreness to a knee, which has had a bit of trouble with, uh, which is his, uh, his right knee. That's a shame because he was uh, going well. Wild. Not a wild kick, but not a great kick. Love it. Back towards Uze. Ridden into the ground by Scotty Burns. It's out of bounds, right on 50. So a good quarter by Melbourne, assisted by what Malcolm has described as, in the very least, a controversial free kick to Farmer, which meant two goals for the price of one. Charles comes off after a short run and coming on to Melbourne is Greg Doyle. Uze again. Wild. Mops up. To McDonald. And good vision. Williams. Collingwood's best runner certainly at the moment with Francis off the ground. He kicks up towards midfield. Walker reads it best. That'll be a free kick Melbourne's way though. Going to number eight in Craig Turley. Melbourne with the numbers, Steins. Brownlow medalist and games record holder on the trot. Gets it back to Glenn Lovett, who's a little bit short of right half forward. Players leading wide, come at the football, or oh, pulled over three Melbourne players. Persista tries to keep it in. You know, it's an amazing thing, footy, and their sport in general, I suppose. The last time they played in round two, Collingwood kicked eight goals to three in the second quarter. So far, it's been four to Melbourne and none to Collingwood. The turnaround's about 24 goals. It's an amazing sport. Boundary throw in. Great tap over the back by Doyle. Clarkson wants some help from behind and almost gets it. Then run over the top of Richardson, who's Tingo. Umpire Saws lets this go. Unbelievably. Tap back to Obst to Hopgood. Love it. Hasn't moved for half an hour. It's got kicks on this side. Pushing, shoving, shawble and line. Comes back on the front of the goal square. Dangerous now for Melbourne. And caught high is Lover. So Glenn Lovett. McDonald came at him on the ground. And caught high. Not many complaints about that, Jared. Well, you see uh, here Glenn Lovett just coming through and... Uh was taken right around the bowling ball. So Glenn Lovett kicks and it's just it's troubled a fair way. I think it's a point. There it is. 8-9 to 3-6. Kevin Brown still looks in a little bit of discomfort, doesn't he? As we have only seconds remaining before half time. He was injured in that collision with Jim Steins in the first quarter and looks like a corky and a rather painful one at that. Mark taken by Scott Crow. Siren just about due to end the second term. And in fact, there it is. It's been a good quarter for Melbourne. The Steins takes the mark right on the bell. And the Bees will go to the halftime break with a very handy lead. Not a match winning one, but the attrition rate for Collingwood is high with the likes of Francis Kelly, etc., on the bench. It's 8 9 57, leading Collingwood 3 6 24. And Steins face off in ruck. Steins has to sit and wait, does very well to Orman Allen, gives it off to Lovett, now caught, breaks through a soft tackle, unbelievable pressure from 
Collingwood was not there. Coming out to meet the ball is Doyle. Hassel feeds it inside to Burns. Burns goes wide to the wing. Richardson in best spot and takes the mark in front of Steins. So back in the centre square. Now swings round. Hot in direction. Seacamp's with him. The ball just sits in that soft patch. Hotton with a terrific handball off. Can't be held. And Smith, quick kick forward by Patterson. Williams, if it bounces, surely. He's a goal kicker. And he took the ball, but not enough. Just a point. So first score this second half goes to Paul Williams and Collingwood. And Collingwood have restructured their forward line. Lee Walker has started at centre-half forward as we see Gavin Brown just jogging around the boundary. One would think in vain. There's no way he'll be coming back on. If he was, he'd be there already. Nathan Buckley has started the second half at full forward. McCow kicks it to himself and then Nettleback. He's had sticky fingers, can't get hold of it. Hassel under pressure, kicks it forward. And as Jared Healy's mentioned, Nathan Buckley sits and waits for it. So Nathan Buckley with one goal. Uh, the Magpies failed to score one in that second quarter. And pretty light stats for Buckley. Well, like, you look at those, I suppose, they're not bad considering others. So it does get a couple out for yeah. the fullback. Kicks, swinging back, but not enough. And only a point result. So two shots at goal in the opening minute and two points result for Collingwood. It's been a problem for them all afternoon. Kicking goals from set shots, Collingwood. They have uh, not had enough shots at goal full stop, but they've probably missed four or five set shots that you would consider gimmies. Brent Lovett to kick in. He's been pretty good. Umpire gives him the whistle, so he has to go. Walker gets himself underneath it and takes the mark. Probably the only tall player out there as such for the Magpies left. Moncourse didn't start. Chance to make his presence felt today. He goes in short, and that's effective. Mark is taken by Graham Wright. Certainly no nearer goal. Lead on in the forward pocket. So finally, hole not plugged, Williams. Leads into it. About the same position as Buckley, actually. And only two Melbourne players on their attacking side of the centre line. They're really moving down into the back line, crowding them out, giving their defenders a, a bit of a chance. Now let's see if he learned anything from Buckley's kick. It went to the right. Williams kicks. It's done the same thing. Exactly the same spot. He's picked out the same black in the crowd with a red jump. One behind. To Williams, 3-9 to 8-9. So three behinds kicked by the Magpies to start the third quarter. And the difference is an even five goals. Brett Lovett again to bring the ball in. He's gone towards the pocket this time. Clarkson, oh, Walker too tall. So another shot at goal for the Magpies. Will Walker have a go? Clarkson not too happy. Walker doesn't like kicking for goal, obviously. He's given it back to right again. Right further out. He's outside 50. Let's see if he decides to have a ping. He's gone back even further. That looks a little bit better, but it still drifts away at the end. So another behind, this time kicked by Wright, his first for the day, and the Collingwood Brains Trust would love better. So 3-10 to 8-9. Brett Lovett, you know, under pressure, there's enough Melbourne players down there, they do, as Jared said, move forward. Now goes to the middle of the ground to Hopwood, and a couple of goals here from Collingwood could really liven this game up. Out wide towards Steins, does well the big fella, stood his ground beautifully, brought it to ground, fed it off to Nettleback, Kicks out towards line. Coming back hard was Crow. Did well. Chorbel has to go to the boundary line. Keeps it in play, sort of. Now Farmer. Great pressure from Chorbel. Well done, son. Keep going. Taps it over to Burns and really should have held it. Gets it out to Wild. Wild now Buckley direction. One on one with Ops. Ops punches aggressively from behind. Coming back inside to Wild. Gives it off quickly to Wright. Wright has to wait. Now wants to feed it off. The hassle running, love it with pressure, bouncing that is holding the ball. Unbelievably, umpire right there didn't see it. Love it, wins back the footy for Melbourne, comes across ground and finds Orman Allen. Orman Allen has Phoebe. The kick gets there. Steins 
an option, ignores him and oh. it straight to his opposite number in Alan Richardson. And a turnover, mark taken in the meantime by Hassett at midfield. Hassett out wide, Turley, now comes back to Cow. Collingwood certainly applying more pressure in the early part of the third quarter, Wild, good hand pass, on it goes to Patterson. Patterson blazes away and has kicked a behind or out of bounds. Let's have a look, it's one behind. Got a goal in the first quarter from a similar distance out, 3-11 to wait nine. And this time the kick in for Melbourne is going to be taken, it looks like, by Andrew Obst. Five straight points now in this quarter to Collingwood. Whilst they haven't got one on the board, they're giving everybody that barracks for the Pies some sort of uh, hope for the future because their attack on the football has been fantastic in this opening couple of minutes. Seacamp. Wild on the mark. Nettlebeck, who's been marking well today. On to Lovett. Brett Lovett's kick up towards centre wing. Another turnover. He picked out two Collingwood players, and the mark was taken by Scott Crow. So still Melbourne unable to pass the centre line early in the third term. Wild, mark or free kick. Too far out to score. Decides to get it moving quickly. Player on his own is Walker. Hopwood came at him. Free kick. Gee, that was David and Goliath, wasn't it? So Lee Walker. Watch Hopwood, number 15. Got him right in the mush. Goal here will be real handy. He's got to make a decision. Either kick the goal or pass the football. And once you've elected to shoot for goal, you've got to go back and go through the ritual of goal kicking. Well, twice he's passed it off, hasn't he? See what he can do when he kicks. Looks like he's missed. Buckley almost. Snap! He's kicked it, I think. It's close. Wait on the goal umpire. It's dripped across one behind. The one goal two to Nathan Buckley and Collingwood at half time. 3-6. They're now 3-12. It's amazing. You don't see that very often, do you? Six points at the start of a quarter. Six points in seven minutes. Every Collingwood defender with their arms up in the air. Obviously, an instruction from the coach just to apply some more pressure on the kicker. Uh, Jimmy Steins, he's really stood tall for most of the day. Pulled that handball back, I really believe. Thought it might have been under pressure. Nittlebeck's on the ground behind to Turley. Turley chips the ball really to no one's advantage. Now it is, because the ball falls beautifully for Phoebe. Phoebe kicks. One goal here would even up the scores in this half, which would be amazing in this quarter, rather. And it'll probably happen through courtesy of Clarkson. Runs onto it. So, after all that time, the scores are level this quarter. Great pass by Lyon, wasn't it? A little bit of a wrestle behind play. Hopgood. And there's the Collingwood player. Is that wild? No, no, it is wild. He is wild. Gee, Gerald, I'd love a dollar for every time I've seen that in footy, too, after a side keeps kicking points. Yeah, six points uh, equalised in one kick by Melbourne. But there was a vital turnover on the members' wing. Matthew Phoebe came up with the football. Melbourne had enormous trouble penetrating the zone defence for 15 minutes. And the turnover from Matthew Phoebe proving costly, or two Phoebe. 63 to 30. Melbourne out of the centre again. Now there's a whistle. It's going to be a free kick to Collingwood. And the recipient is Gavin Krasiska. McDonald goes out wide for him. He's going to go long, though, instead. Stein's punches from behind. Effectively, Farmer back on the ground. Love it over the top. Phoebe again. Farmer does the shepherding. Still he goes. It's going goalwards. Oh. It's going. It bounces and it's through. Two quick goals to Melbourne. Collingwood kicks six points. The D's have booted two goals. It's 10-9 to 3-12. And the difference after 39 points. The biggest margin of the match. This is one of the best goals I've seen uh, for some time. Have a look at this fade. Gets rid of one player, then backs himself, which a lot of players are scared to do with pace, and then kicks a pretty smart goal from just inside the 50. Well, the D's on fire. The margin is 39 points. Steins, who's been working very hard. Mammoth kick inside 50. Two players fall over. Umpire lets it go. Opportunity for Farmer. Oh, too severe for Gary Lyon. You remember that one in the goal square last year. Phoebe's caught. 
Farmer comes out with a football. Ormond Allen outside 50. A long bomb by the South Australian. There's another one. Ho ho! The D's on fire. 11 9 to 3 12. They're loving this. And you think the spirit well and truly broken now for Collingwood. Have a look at this. It reminded me of a gridiron goal where they just work the ball back to the kicker. Here it is. Farmer gets it, lays it off. And Orman Allen just comes in and goes bang from just inside, just outside the 50. A pretty smart goal. Three quick goals to Melbourne. Yes, in fact, three and three minutes, Jared. Richardson comes over the top. Hop good strong over the footy. That's wanting the footy and kicks out wide, unfortunately. Really did spoil that. And it races towards the boundary line. First there, Williams. Comes back inside. Over the top of the players. Cow first to recover. Wants some support. Patterson misses the tackle. Steins to Smith. Sean Smith kicks and kicks long and low. Misses Neats. Now the runners are wanted. Neats unbelievably recovered for a big man first. Just tried to set up Turley and couldn't. Worried out of it by Crow. Kicks the ball back into the centre of the ground. Lovett comes hard at it. But the free kick goes to Wright. Grab. Now Wright runs into Lovett. And umpire Hayden Kennedy doesn't fall for that. Which is good to see. So frenetic piece of play. Those last three or four minutes with the Demons really splitting the game open. So Graham White. 45 points. Kicks long. Packer players. Try to be punched on. Williams sits and waits. Now spins round. Kicks. Beautiful kick to Buckley. Oh. Oh. Well, breaking away from Mormon Allen. Amazingly, uh, nothing going right for a lot of players out there. They're mainly in black and white jumpers. Great tap from Lovett to Farmer. Line stretches. Waits for it to bounce and sees it over. Well, Hammy stretched that one for Gary Lyon, and he was uh, not going to overexert himself. He's done well, though, today, Lyon. He's got a few mates. I mentioned I saw Melbourne against Essendon. They gave something that day. Doyle punches down to the front of goal. Shawball has certainly given a lot more today. Krasiska certainly been helped by injuries to Collingwood, but that's probably taking something away from Melbourne. Watson's kick. Russell, Walker, first game back after a long absence with a knee injury. Buckley this time takes the mark in front of Obst. Gives it away, Williams will kick the goal. And boy, did they need that one. That's their first goal since the first quarter. Four twelve to 11-9, 75 plays 36. In terms of modern football, with a quarter and a half to go, they're not out of it, but they would certainly have to lift. Yes, it's, the, get, the goal was built from the back line. There was running defenders linking up in the middle of the ground. And then they got the ball in quickly to the forward line. Smart one-on-one -on -one there by Buckley, and unselfish to give it over to Paul Williams, who got the easy one. So the margin back to 39 points with that Paul Williams goal, courtesy of Nathan Buckley handball. Steins grabs it. Tingay races around. Now wants to straighten it up and goes long. So the Flyers are wanted here. And there is a flyer. Super mark from Alex McDonald. Had to sit and got the ride. And will that lift the Maggies? Off to Williams. Williams, Sean Smith reads it better than Alan Richardson. And once again, the tank breaks down. Kicks out wide. Tingo. Has players, but there's virtually stationary players, so great advice then from now an experienced player to just look for other options. Goes back again, Lyon uses his body, can't get hold of it. Short will just gives it away. Love it. Tries the old one two, then to Steins who chips it, and Krasiska reads it beautifully. So have a look at this, Jared, isn't this a great part of the game? <laughs> yeah, what a fly. <clears throat> and this is the man that's got it, Alex McDonald. Chips in towards centre half forward and hot. Fades Farmer. Chips it into the middle of the ground and Patterson. 
So the Maggies really need to do something from here. I might turn the lights on soon. That'll please you, Blighty. <laughs> Towards centre wing, Sean Smith also back today after an arm injury. Good tackle by Richardson. Back to Patterson. Patterson keeps going. Melbourne with the numbers, though, in this contest. The punch away effective from Ormond Allen. Punches in the end to himself. Tried to scoop it back to Clarkson. Missed his target. Russell to Walker. Williams out of bounds. Bad luck. It's a little bit like Des Tudnam, the way he attacks the footy. Williams, as the lights do come on. No, they don't. I thought we had them on for a second. It won't be far away, I can assure you. Nettlebeck. Just a little torch I've got, Pete. Uh, that's what it is. Seacamp from Turley. Maybe we'll all be issued with one after what happened on Saturday. And that's a good mark taken by Burns. Good use of the body just to nudge out his opponent. Wild almost runs into Hotton down there. End result of which is not a good kick. Steins, who's been terrific today, liked his game. Under Lovett, who's been busy. Turley. Lyon. Gets rid of his opponent. Now onto the bike, Gary. Centering kick for Farmer. Brilliant footy. And Farmer will go back a chance to kick his third. Well, it was classic Gary Lyon, wasn't it? It was all class. The one-handed pickup, which we just missed there, and then great vision to Farmer running to the top of the square with the percentages for goal kicking up. Farmer with two goals. And that incident that people will talk about for a while when he was pushed over and then kicked another one. Point blank range, you would suggest, directly in front. 15 metres out. He kicks. Go on, player hasn't moved. He's got his third. 12 9 to 4 12 at the MCG. Let's have a look at this one now. Turley's kick out in front. Just a lazy left hand there for Gary Lyon. A fellow whose career was in doubt only about two or three weeks ago. And he does appear to be moving a hell of a lot better following a series of injections in his back over the last month or so. But back in the centre, Steins does well again. It's been Ooh. brilliant towards line, almost traps it again, really then goes to the second effort, falls to Lovett. Lovett's from a standing start has just missed to the right. So the Demons get a point, and Gary Lyon gets up very gingerly. So seven minutes to go of this third quarter, and Brett Lovett gets his first score on the board today, which is only behind. 12-10 to 4-12. Donald comes out wide to Hassel, can run. It's a player in Williams. He has worked hard, Williams. And Williams feels Neat's coming at him. So he just puts in a couple of shorties and pulls up. Now goes back into the middle of the ground. Back to Hassel. So the old one-two. Hassel can now run. Bounces once. Orman Allen comes at him. And then forces himself to kick under pressure on his left foot. Coming across. Sean Smith. has been very good at the back. Phoebe. Clarkson has to kick as right comes at him. And he does that. The set of half forward. Over Neat's head. But he's clever, and he senses Charles on the ground, kicks, the kick wobbles forward, and unfortunately not high enough, and Shawball cuts it off. Just in front of Gary Lyon, out to Richardson on his own, has a paddock to move in, past 50. Out to Williams again. Williams on centre wing for Collingwood. Kicks to half forward, Richardson with Walker for Collingwood. Out of bounds. Sean Charles at the other end. Beautiful tap on. Point blank range. Low trajectory kick, but he can't be it. Marked by Shawble. Just checking his number two cut there, but <laughs> Steins, a little gift to Sea Camp. Charles tries to get front position, body on body. Farmer applies a tackle, holding the man. <laughs> Hotton will take the free kick. And Farmer doesn't like it. The end result of which is 50 metres, Collingwood's way. Well, must, whatever he said, it must have been pretty ferocious. 
Pettis ferocious that free kick oh. he got with a push in the back. My golly, it was three or four yeah. words. Won't forget that for a while. Let's just have a look and see if we can lip read. There's the tackle. Fifty for that. Mm. So free kick taken by Hotton. Marking contest. Wild and Ormond Allen. Wild keeps his feet and the momentum. Opportunity for Watson. Ormond Allen and Wild again. Turley is in there. It won't bounce for Seacamp. Finally is able to squirt out a hand pass. Three or four Melbourne players were there, one of whom was Phoebe. He finally gets it back to Turley. They're working it pretty hard. A fickle bounce there might favour Collingwood in the end. It's Scotty Burns. He sees it over the line in front of Sean Charles. And uh, Jeff Farmer coming off the ground for Adam Uzo. And haven't things changed? Bloody, he used to be able to go through the umpire's family tree and give them all a serve. As, as long as you forgot uh, what you said a split second later, it'd be no penalty. <laughs> And so they did an interesting forward set up then, Colin, but they had the, the line of players and uh, it just shows you they really haven't got that tall option up forward. Richardson to Russell didn't work. Uzo gives the hand pass away. Phoebe inside 50. Doesn't go at goal. Target was Gary Lyon. He still gets it across his body. He kicks and bounces. And it bounces for a goal. Two goals to their champion skipper. It's 13-10 to 4-12, and this is a wrap. The Melbourne's highest score for the year was only 14 goals in their one and only victory this season in round three against St Kilda. And they're well and truly going to beat that this season, uh, this day, I should say. They might even do it uh, this quarter. So just over four minutes to go of this third quarter. Tingay. And the kick falls to Richardson. Got a runner out wide. It's Watson. Just a force to handball. Awkward pick up there for Patterson. Phoebe's worked very hard. And that is holding the ball. Pitting his arms beautifully. And the free kick will go to Watson. Steins drops back, and that frees up Hotton in the centre of the ground. Now he has to go wide to Buckley. Buckley uses his body beautifully and drops another mark. Now he's in trouble, has to go backwards and put Russell in trouble. I mean, someone's got to take responsibility in this Collingwood side. I suppose that must have been close to holding the ball as well. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I mean, you can get to those states of games, you get a mindset, and you think, well, gee, well, I'll try and share it, but really what you need to do is actually lead. And sometimes it's actually kicking the ball 60 metres. Ball's forced forward. Players try and sock it off the ground. Clarkson works in hard on the knee. And the players stack on top of him. It's true that, Jared, isn't it? I mean, some people just want that responsibility. And it looks to me today, Collingwood hasn't had enough of those leader types. And we've seen a number of the times uh, players taking marks, going back, and then chipping the ball six and seven metres with a kick only to be intercepted, which uh, really does sap you of confidence and energy. And I agree with you, Malcolm. If in doubt, uh, go to the long option. They've got Nathan Buckley in the square by himself. He's going to be better off with uh, long ball in. Seacamp kicks the ball to centre-half forward. Krasiska with the set and punches. Players ran at it. Curly tries to feed it and does well to Tingo. That's good play on the boundary line. Now chips it towards line. Dropping back Neats. Falls over the back line. Surely another one for Gary. Third for him. And oh, no, he's hit the post. Unbelievable. So Gary Lyon misses and uh, Melbourne move on to 13-11 and 4-12 Collingwood. So we at which post he hit Melbourne. Yeah, I thought he might have squeezed it. Percy Jones would be pleased if he did. Oh, hit the near one. Yeah. Well, we just couldn't see it from behind. 13-11 to 4-12. Watson, 29 to 36 at the G. It's a game so far that Collingwood would uh, prefer to forget. Stephen Patterson's kick towards the square. Richardson trying to find some space. There wasn't much there. It's a great kick. Though. Did well. Pinpoint accuracy. Hassel's kick. Buckley this time doesn't drop the mark and holds it in front of Sean Smith. I think it's a great move, Buckley to full forward. 
they can get the ball down to him one out. He knows when to lead. He'll hold himself back so he doesn't get too far out from goal. And even if he does, he's a better than even chance of kicking it from uh, on the 50. Sure is. He can kick some amazing goals. Well, they kicked six behinds to start this quarter. What if? What if they'd been six goals? This time, Buckley. That looks a better kick. It is a better kick. So Buckley gets his second and the Magpies fifth. It's 13 of Evan to 5 12. So the difference back to 47 points. You've just got to keep on working when you're in a situation like this because uh, a lot of the season to go and Collingwood have got to come up with a suitable structure up forward because they take on the West Coast Eagles next week at Subiaco, then followed by Richmond, Hawthorne, and North Melbourne. So a tough month coming up for the Pies. Yes, indeed. Back in the centre. Steins. Almost. Hotton recovers pretty well this time. Kicks it forward. Packet plays at centre half forward for Collingwood. Ball's kicked out. Almost. Now to Walker. That's it. Take responsibility. I mean, the kick's no good, but that's good, I reckon. It shows some leadership. And I'd rather see that happen, Jared, than another turnover and handball. And, you know, I mean, just someone's got to do it. And to be fair to Lee Walker, he is coming back from an extended period out of the game. Hasn't played uh, at this level for probably over six weeks. And you do take time to get your footing. And doing exactly what he did, taking them on, just shows leadership and gets you uh, back in business. So Smith with the free kick. Lead from Lovett. It's a lovely kick. And really no pressure from behind. And the you know, guy's starting to guess now where the footy's going to go. That's how you really get in trouble as a team. Every kick's important. Love it. Goes long. Jeez, oh. well, I'm glad you're giving the votes, but this bloke would be in him if he'd stop right now. Terrific kick to Love it. Whoops. Put it down. Has enough time to recover. Comes in the next direction. Shawble does well from behind. Falls to Charles. Runs at it. Now caught. The ball spills out. Tingay. Great skill to pick the ball up, kicks it high, big fly from behind, and needs. He actually has been a lot quieter this quarter. Krasiska uh, has quietened him a bit, but he hasn't been the ball a lot either. It's been the runners really for Melbourne, and perhaps more of Gary Lyon. But in that second quarter, when the game was there to be won, I guess it was Neitz who put his hand up. I think there's also some quarters where the half-forward line gets bypassed, and you go... Uh with good possession out of the middle, you go over that line and direct a full forward line. But uh, this would warm the cockles of Neil Barm's heart because David needs a centre half forward firing makes Melbourne a far different side. Yes, indeed it does. Goes back a long way, gets a nice rhythmic run. Now starts to accelerate a bit, kicks, kicks up, and has kicked his fourth goal. David Neitz, with 15 seconds to go at this third quarter, moves the margin out to 53 points. And I think the uh, appearance of Sean Charles has also given the confidence of the Melbourne players a real lift. Tingay's having his best game for some time. Neitz is catching everything, as we've already said. Gary Lyon appears to be uh, on the improve. Stein's 22 positions, seven marks. Brilliant, though. So back into the centre, Ormond Allen with some weight and gives Richardson a piggyback. The other way around, actually, but Richardson's going to be on the receiving end of the free kick. So McDonald gives Collingwood something down towards half forward. Buckley wants the mark and is not being given the mark. He gets booed, A, because he threw the ball to the ground by the Melbourne supporters and the Collingwood supporters booing the decision. Final quarter. 53 points the difference. Richardson and Steins to contest the opening bounce. Steins has been fantastic today. Certainly one of his better games a few weeks ago, breaking Titus's record. Kick away by Hassel. Play on. Love it. Richardson, a play on call. No mark. Glenn Love it. Has it paddled away from him. Under Williams. Collingwood's leading kick getter today. Down towards half forward. The Magpies would love a goal to start the quarter. Hotton's long hand pass. Not really to the advantage of his side. Chopped off by Brett Lovett, who's been terrific. And Phoebe has given his usual good game on the wing. Charles. Out to Steins. 
Just can't quite get it before it goes over the line, Jim Steins. And out of bounds on centre wing. And those stats are pretty impressive. I mean, that doesn't include hit outs. He certainly had a height advantage on most of his Collingwood opponents, including Richardson, with whom he goes at the moment. Love it. Now Hopgood. Hopgood and Tingo, the lookalikes, have been pretty good. That may be out of bounds on the full. In fact, it is, and that will be a Collingwood free kick. Gavin Krasiska. Trying to stand tall at centre-half back. Kicks back towards centre-half forward. Steins first there. Richardson taps it forward. Some pedal ball from Collingwood to Williams. Williams sees a player, and that is Patterson. And pretty good skills under pressure. Players back in the goal square, but Patterson wants to take the shot. Stephen Patterson from Nord in South Australia, one of the many at Collingwood. Great kick from Williams, really. Really was probably less than 50-50 with that kick, but great skills to get away with it. So Patterson from 40 metres out kicks it very high, but that's very straight. So the Magpies open their account in the last term. The football manager for Collingwood, Gabby Allen, said two weeks ago that Magpie supporters needed to steal themselves for two years of pain. And how prophetic those words have been today. There's still a quarter of football to go, and if uh, Collingwood can kick six or seven goals, they can get a positive out of this game. The Magpies have got their first on the long way back if they're to try to get back into this match. It's a tall order. Norman Allen out to Clarkson, who's certainly been one of Melbourne's best players today. Neats, good bump, doesn't come up with the footy. Francisca takes it from Burns. Now it's on to Orchard, and now Russell. Well, Collingwood looking a little bit better. McDonald, Buckley. Well, they both went at it, they both had to go at it. Walker is there, the Melbourne defenders try to tie it up. Crow is there, a chance. Obst gets ridden into the ground. Is that a push in the back? No, not according to the umpire. Andrew Obst will hand the ball back. The South Australian. Steins had it, lost it, regained it. Goes for the boundary line. Didn't see anybody when he turned around to kick. And the ball just getting there for a throw in. 35 metres from goal. Collingwood's attacking end. Early stages of the final quarter. It was 53 points the difference at three-quarter time, 33 at half time, six at quarter time. Steins and Richardson. Steins again goes for the boundary line. Tried to find Cow. The Demons work it around marginally. It's now almost at the 50-metre line. So just a quiet piece of play here at the start of this last quarter. Richardson and Steins. Gets front stop Steins. Taps it to himself. Now to Orman Allen. He's been good. Yep. I've really liked him today. Hassel has to sit and wait. Now recovers after dropping the mark. Wants to handle. Gee, sit watching a task, but he did it very well. Chip. Chip doesn't go where he wanted to to Buckley. Falls to Patterson. Has a player loose in the pocket. And has been called for throw. So perhaps what may have been is now not. And Orman Allen to take the kick. Gee, it's very dark here. Super dark. It's been one of those weekends, really. <laughs> <laughs> Big flies from behind from Watson and belts it out of bounds. And the umpire calls for another boundary throw in. We're only 11 days off the shortest day of the year, so I suppose it's not surprising that it's getting dark. So these two go at it again and trying to find that front spot. Richardson gets it this time. Oh, that's a clever tap from Steins. It's Tingay on the boot. And Clarkson's happy to see it over. Alistair Clarkson, 13 kicks and the one handle. Just quite off a bit in that third quarter. But the D's really on top in this game. Taps it back to Allen. Clever tap under pressure to Clarkson. Kicks it high, right on centre wing. Players come at it. 
Ops taps it back intelligently in the path of Charles. Charles kicks the ball. One-on-one -on -one contest, Nietzsche, you'd reckon. Always in the advantageous position. Krasiska was trying hard to come back. Now chips the ball to Turley. Just misses him. Leg. And running away is Russell. Unbelievably quiet day for Scott Russell. Two kicks and three handballs to Burns. Goes out wide. Lovett comes to make a contest. Is that a mark? Yeah. Now caught holding the ball. Pretty tough, but... Ooh. I thought it was a mark, Lottie. Yeah. Hassel. Goes in short to Williams. He'll hit the ground and run. Now goes to centre-half forward. Tries to set up his teammates. The ball doesn't fade them. Hasn't favoured Collingwood a lot today. Nettlebeck doesn't always draw with the ball and come back inside a lot to Smith. And Smith comes out wide to Tingay. And Sean Smith done well in defence. Tingay taken down as he kicks. Almost. Yes, it's a mark. Another one for David Neitz. His eighth mark. And coming in for his 13th kick. He'll look for Lyon and finds him. Lyon wastes no time. Player on his own. Number 17. Brett Lovett. Had a very good game, Brett Lovett. He'd been the best three or four players on the ground. Plenty of possessions. And he's back to his best creativity with his hands. It's always been his great strength. Seems to have a neck Jerry would have been able to find space and get on his own a lot. Those stats are pretty impressive for Brett Lovett. He kicks in the gloom, 35 metres out. It looks pretty good. It is good. It's a goal. So Lovett gets his first. Go Dees, they are. It's 15-11 to 6-12. We haven't had much to smile about or cheer for this year, the Melbourne fans, but today, with 15 goals, 11, they've uh, surpassed their best score before today, which was 14-14. And there's plenty of time left to improve on this. So the margin the same as at uh, three-quarter time, 53 points. Collingwood share it to Orchard. Gives it off to McDonald. Goes pretty direct. That's a free kick. Smith was grabbed high, not played. Running across the front to Williams. Probably been Collingwood's best player. And Orman Allen just happy to take that over. Almost on the 50 metre line. I think what's made this win even more meritorious for Melbourne is that uh, Sean Smith, who kicked six goals for Melbourne against Collingwood last time, has played a pretty good uh, game in defence for Melbourne. So, ruck work on the boundary line. Steins grabs hold of it. Tried to sock it off the ground. Caught to Walker. Slips as he cool. tried to kick it. He's now swamped by two opposition players. Right cleverly off the ground. Put some pressure on the Demon defence, but Sean Smith, terrific in defence, has been mentioned. Comes hard at it and knocks it over. No boundary throw in. Sorted out Crow. Paddling in front of him. Goes back to McDonald. Has to kick around the corner. Kicks it very long. That's a great kick. That's a terrific kick, but unfortunately misses. So just another behind for the Magpies. One behind. Lee Walker certainly cop one uh, here right across the chest. Big tackle from Ormond Allen. His game has been pretty good. And there's the man on screen. 101 to 49. With a name like Ormond Allen, he probably couldn't play for any other club in Victoria apart from <laughs> Melbourne. Magpies with the numbers out there. Hassel tried to get it to Williams. Collingwood's leading kick getter. He's had six more kicks than any other Collingwood player. And that may be 50. Hotton. It's not going to be 50. Picks out right. Graham Wright still a fair distance from goal. Six and three. Far and above the busiest player for the Magpies, Williams with 17 and 3. And only two of the Collingwood players have got more than 10 kicks, Francisca and Crow. But back with Wright from 52 metres out. Good kick. Don't think it was touched. What right on the goal umpire. It's a goal. 
So a pretty good kick from Graham right at the end. And Collingwood seventh, 15-11 to 7-13. It's 101 to 55. And we still have 12 minutes left in the match. Here's Alastair Clarkson again going for the soccer kick, but just didn't quite find his target. This, this kick actually looked as if it grew legs just over the last uh, couple of yards of its flight. Just got over the line. 46 point margin to Demons. Steins with his left hand. Falls back to the Collingwood players. They sort of wobble it forward. Oh, isn't that terrific? Yeah, far. Doesn't he go? Can't he go, Paul Williams? Unfortunately, he ran out of room as he kicked it. Smith tapped it back. Off the ground by Walker attempt was no good. And Collingwood now with Richardson. Screws the ball back around. Coming back somewhere near the goals. And Seacamp happy to tap it over the line for another behind. So just a point there to Mark Richardson and Andrew Ops to bring it back in. He's got Phoebe on in the pocket. He's also got Turley on. He's gone a little bit longer. The longer option is Turley, who takes the mark. You need a miner's lamp to see them down there now. Steins. Certainly one of Jim's better games. He's played a lot of good ones, obviously, to win a brown in the middle. You have to do that, but he has been superb today. That's a good mark to Neitz. Oh, well, you would think it was a good mark. The Melbourne supporters agree with me. They've been pretty tough on that marking today. Yeah, I think Leeds also thought he should have got so, the free kick for one right in the chops there. Fair call. It's a throw in on centre wing. Steins and Richardson. It went past Phoebe. Might get a second chance. William, uh, Williams chops it off, but straight to Clarkson from a standing start. Up towards half forward, and the mark is taken by Watson. Watson's kick to the square. The former Hawk, Alex McDonald, who took a screamer, certainly mark of the day so far. Nettlebeck, mark. Buckley. Is that a mark? That's not a mark either. Now Russell, who's been robbed of kicks, gets robbed of a chance to have one there. Not his best day, and the Melbourne defenders are able to tie it up. So who thought that was a mark? Well, Buckley was certainly the man in front. And let's have a look. Well, he wasn't the man in front. But he did look to have first hands on it. Yeah, but he got to be eye on the footy to mark it. Not necessarily. <laughs> I see plenty of photos hey? with the eyes. Well, he turned his head away. I mean, he just, I, I, I would suggest he didn't get a fingernail on it. Because how could you when you're not looking at it? Richardson. Past Turley. Now Sean Smith, who have liked his game. Clarkson, yes, just. Get some attention. And late attention to that from Johnny Hassel. Now he gets a call to play on. Oh. oh, bad kick, bad option. Graham Wright takes the mark, and Brent Lovett glares back at his teammate. And Wright skips back to take his kick. Mistakes like that can be costly. It probably won't today. Graham Wright for his second goal. Second goal this quarter. And he's kicked it. Well, the Pies are coming storming home here at the MCG. They probably need to continue on as they are for the next two and a half hours if they're going to win. Though, as we said, if they can outscore Melbourne in this quarter, they can go out with some positive at least. And with a big game coming up against the West Coast Eagles next week, any positive they can muster will be an important one throughout the week. 39-point margin now to Melbourne. Run pretty hard at the centre. McDonald kicks the ball forward. Coming to charge it at Sean Smith. Look at that. Oh. That is fantastic. And deserve that. Very hard to stop a player coming full bore at the footy. And Smith goes wide. Clarkson, former teammates at North Melbourne, off to Phoebe. Phoebe with the kick to Steins. He does cover a lot of ground, Jimmy Steins. Comes back inside to Lovett and almost not played to Watson Patterson kicks the ball there was a lot of options there Walker almost the mark Seacamp comes back onto his left foot kicks the ball high and standing the ground in front is Houghton uh, Trent Houghton has had a man from task today against Jimmy Steins off to Hassel Hassel chips and pretty good kick in the end of right 
but right to uh, causing some options up forward and across that center line. Now goes to Buckley. Steins comes back out to help Smith. Smith does very well in the air and thumps it away. And Craig Turley's happy to let that one out. Just near the 50 metre line. And we've just got over eight minutes of this last quarter remaining. Turley's been handy, as have a lot of Melbourne players. So let's throw in in the gloom on the outer side. Steins taps at the front, tried to find Phoebe. Couldn't do so. Nettlebeck to Obst to Phoebe. Tackled by Richardson. Hopgood. A little gift to Tingay. Lyon well up the ground. Then love it. Out of bounds from Turley. When Sean Wright, uh, Sean White, I should say, retired at the end of this season, as we see the crowd figure there, and a pretty good one uh, for this public holiday. Melbourne did have a real deficiency at full back, and they really haven't come up with uh, the answer. But today, one of the great things, I think, for Melbourne was that Sean Smith has been an outstanding player there. Perhaps he will fill that role. Phoebe's kick taken by Shawbel, who outbodies Lyon, to Richardson. Richardson kicked down towards Steins. May have been taken high, but not according to the umpire. Collingwood showing a lot of endeavour in the final quarter as they try to get the ball out of the centre square. Wilds in there, so are a few others. And it's on the bottom of that pack. Just with that line of thought then, would Sean Charles be the one after Sean Smith? Oh, a lot of Sean's <laughs> around, aren't they? Big leap by Hot. Hassel. Off a standing start, wobbles it towards half forward, 50 metres out. Good shepherd by Buckley for Williams. Williams measures the kick to Richardson. Not Richardson, it's Crow who takes the mark. He decides to play on into the goal square. Walker should kick it from there and does. Lee Walker picks his first goal in a long while, and Melbourne 15-11, Collingwood 9-14. That's their fourth goal of the quarter, the Collingwood side. Certainly adding some respectability to their total. We still have seven minutes to go. Just uh, with this little push that it gives Lee Walker after, he doesn't push him very much, but he actually does touch him. Is that a push in the back, Jared? Well, there was a new precedent set this, what, this afternoon in the first quarter. Oh, Collingwood, kicking some goals in the last quarter. Not good, tries to work his way through it all. Norman Allen's punched. Kicked forward by Russell. Nearly a one-hander. It's gone to half forward. Sean Smith kicks the ball off the ground. It falls to Williams. He has to stop trying. To young Mark Orchard. Wants a player inside. The handball doesn't quite hit. Back to Walker. Walker can snap. And misses. Well, the Melbourne runner pretty busy trying to get his charges to fire up a little bit. They've all gone to sleep at once, Melbourne. Collingwood getting the ball out of the centre and uh, creating some pressure on the Melbourne defence. Did lead by 53 points at one stage. Nettlebeck missed it. Patterson measures the kick. No mark taken by Walker. And an abundance of Melbourne players. Smith from Lovett. Clarkson. No. He goes long. A longish to Phoebe. Phoebe's at right half back. Collingwood with the numbers, though, here on centre wing. Charles doesn't get a favourable bounce. Goes back to Craig. Good tackle, Charles! Ball jar three in that tackle. Burns is in there. Wild. The hand passes to Watson. Hassel is Hassel by Hopgood. That's out of bounds on the full. Melbourne players certainly thought so, but the boundary umpire disagrees. And I'm not going to argue. It did appear to come off a Collingwood boot. 69 to 101. Melbourne will hang on. But Tony Shaw will certainly be pleased. Patterson out to Buckley with their final quarter effort. And that's a good pass. That's a Donald. And you'd say, why didn't they play like this for the other three quarters of the game? Certainly with Craig Kelly, Gavin Brown and Tony Francis missing. And, of course, Monkhorst not taking his place on the side. It has made... A big difference. The other thing that's missing, of course, is the pressure that Melbourne applied in the first three quarters. And unfortunately for Melbourne, they've had a real good look at the scoreboard at three-quarter time. Decided they've done enough. 
McDonald has kicked only one behind today. Inside 50. He has kicked it. It's a goal. So a good performance by the Magpies. Still five minutes to go. And the difference is 26 points. It was 53. It would be an improbable result if they pinched it. Brisbane came back on Hawthorne last year in a memorable comeback, the best ever. One couldn't see Collingwood doing it today. It's a beautiful kick, Alex McDonald, one of the best in the AFL. And Tony Shaw will be just hanging on to that glimmer of hope. Yes, we talked about this in three-quarter time, Jerry, didn't we? Just like, just keep going. Mm. And when you can get something out of a game of footy, I'm always a great believer in that. And you can learn, no matter how old. So Steins. Falls to Wild. Throws it under the boot. Right, half forward, caught. Holding that ball. And the umpire agrees. It was just a great tackle. Wright went for two or three strides and really did have a chance to handball it away or kick it away prior to being tackled. Well, I'm not a great believer in that rule. I do believe that was holding the ball. Yeah, I think Graham Wright tried to take on the ta tackler and he got pinged for it. He's had a pretty good last quarter, Graham Wright. Mm. Glenn Lovett. Fingers cut out of the gloves. Kicks the ball. Flyers wanted Francisco with the big punch from behind. Players in underneath it. Wild's got some important touches since being on too. He's had his chances on, off, on and off the bench. And uh, gee, this is getting dark. I mean, it's, the screen doesn't actually show that, does no. it? But it's uh, very dark indeed. Love it. Now unloads it towards the boundary line. Crow stands, kicks, very high ball. Players wait and love it. Comes in over the top of Jocelyn Pays. And now wants to go longish. And that little way he does. Line from behind. Can't get hold of it. Falls. Quick kick the front of the square. The ball bounces for Chris Siska. Not very kindly at all. That is into the point behind post. So a point will result. And first score for some time for Melbourne. They kick 6-2 to 2-6 in the third quarter. Collingwood have outscored them in the final term. But the margin too great. Clarkson and Patterson squaring off. Under four minutes remaining, Krasiska kicks in through the gloom, up towards half-back, Richardson, good grab. They'll need to be at their best to tackle the barnstorming Eagles next week. It's Collingwood, of course, I'm speaking of. Hotton has the mark in front of Seacamp, gives it to Russell, not a great hand pass. Effective to Burns, Burns' kick is long, it's very long. And it crosses the line just in front of Alex McDonald. Another behind of the Magpies. 76 to 102 the score. Sean Smith. Who took that magnificent mark at the Gabba last year. Gets the whistle from the umpire to kick in. Trent Ormond Avon in the back pocket. His red hair shining out in the gloom. Andrew Obst. Going to try to use the ball, use a bit of the clock, Hopgood, Hopgood's kick to centre wing, it's a bounce, Phoebe gets ridden into the ground, the ball jarred free in the tackle, it's picked up by Tingay, who started the match so well, wow. Charles out busted there by Johnny Hassel, and that was a good mark. Fantastic mark, into Burns, Burns goes long, ball comes out at his Richardson, met from the front by Hopgood, no free kick, out to love it. Lovett has a player wide in Phoebe and ends up with that player. Phoebe goes short over the top to Tingo. Tingo keeps running, very tired, to Charles. Charles almost to go, but slipped at the crucial time. Orman Allen and Turley, all the three of them. Three on three now, so we handles the ball effectively. Turley again back to Lovett. Lovett now goes to the top of the square. Flyers wanted and got one. Adam Uzo took a nice one too in the second quarter, I think, Jerry. Right in the pocket in there. Yes, about the same spot. And he is a very talented player, Adam Uzo. Hasn't it come on as much as perhaps Melbourne would have liked this season. But always difficult for young players, an 18 or 19 year old, to 
produce their best footy when the senior players are missing and the sides getting a belting every week. So the left footer. Youngster from the Murray Bush Rangers. Kick from 35 metres. Now, goal umpire's pretty happy. Gary Lyons happy. Melbourne have got their 16. And first one for Uzo. 16-12 to 10-16 at the MCG. 32 points. It was 26, of course. To see Sean Charles getting a few touches. Oh, but a lot of good players. Especially that one on screen. Brett Lovett. 16 and 9 plus 5 marks and a lot of other useful work around the ground. Who's a couple of good marks and he's kept that one off with a goal. Under two minutes remaining in the match. Steins, tireless it would seem. Out of the centre, Tingo. Neats, bustled off it by Burns, who's still got it. Still he goes. Tries to beat two of them. It must be holding the ball. And very close to it. Because he did try to beat a couple of tacklers, but the umpire has given him the benefit of the doubt. So a bounce right on 50. Melbourne's attacking half of the ground. Twenty-meter punch by Steins to Richardson. Some nice balking gets him clear. Well, nearly clear. Dragged down and the tackle. Steins off the ground. Clarkson on his own. Fifteen meters out. Bang! Thank you very much. He kicks his second. Well, I think Alistair Clarkson has been in the uh, best couple of players on the ground. Not so much for the possessions he's got, although he's got his share and also kicked two goals. But he's done it as well as take out Collingwood's best player this season in Scott Russell. Great tackle by Uze. Outstanding. In fact, it could almost have been a free kick to Uze. Whilst Russell has now uh, got some breathing space out on the wing, and Alistair Clarkson has got a new man. He has had a fantastic afternoon. Yes, the margin back out to 38 points. Rockman go at it in the centre. Steins on hands and knees, tries to give it off to a teammate. Falls back into players, and eventually a trip will go to Watson, right in the centre of the ground. I'm not sure this uh, game was meant to be a day-nighter. <laughs> <laughs> and a lovely kick out to Patterson. Patterson, undecided, now chips it. Wants a player, which, which Williams, in fact, lost it to Clarkson. Clarkson goes back, Nettlebeck caught, but there's enough of them there. And with pretty good teamwork, Melbourne run it out. And Phoebe or Steins? Which one? Steins. Must have been called back in by his teammate. Terrific stuff, that. And Jimmy Steins. Goes back into Nettlebeck. There's a player running for him through the middle. Watson comes, Seacamp at him. Now Richardson unloads, and there's the siren. So, pretty convincing win to Melbourne. 17-12, 114 to Collingwood, 10-16, 76. The D's second win of the year, and they're...